I am writing this in an effort to process what has transpired. My wife and I have been married for 15 years and have several children. We don't have a perfect marriage, but who does? I love her, and she loves me, and we've made it work so far. Late last year, my wife began acting suspiciously. She seemed inebriated in the evenings. I thought it was her medication. And then she gave me a hard sell on an open marriage out of nowhere. <sighs> Suspicious. I invite her out to lunch and push her on what's going on. She tells me she began drinking again. She is a recovering alcoholic several years sober with minor relapses. She tells me she has been chatting with mutual acquaintances of ours, a married father of one of our kid's friends, and wants to be intimate with him. I am angry. She tells me how sexually restless she is, but does not want to cheat on me. I am not cool with the concept of an open marriage and I tell her so. She says okay and begs me not to tell him. I give her my word that I won't. Later on that day, I befriended him and his wife on social media. We're not tight or anything, but they know me. I wasn't going to do anything. I just didn't know what to do. So, he tells her I befriended him. She tells me this and begins messy crying in front of the kids. I cannot handle her losing it over another man, so I go to work. Suspicious. We talk through it. We talk about her struggles, her depression, her drinking, her restlessness. She begins taking steps to curb her drinking. She says she's told her friend no. She goes with me on a work trip. I'm in an absolutely foul mood, not because of her. It's on me. She drinks a little. It's a struggle for us. We get back. She goes to AA meetings. Still gets drunk. We get back into the daily grind. She goes on a work retreat a few miles away for a few days. I begin to worry that she might meet up with her friend. She invites me up the first day and we enjoy each other's company. Friday goes by and Saturday I'm out of town. Sunday she doesn't go to church with the family. I consider this suspicious. I start to get concerned. I don't know if it's a hunch or paranoia, but it feels weird. I express my concerns. She tells me nothing's happened. Fine. We again talk about an open marriage. She says she doesn't want to change anything until she has been sober for a year. I have come to grips with the concept, whether it occurs or not. A few days ago, the kids had YouTube on the TV open, and I checked to see what they were watching. As I scroll past Amy Winehouse's Back to Black, I realize it is linked to her account. I didn't know about this album, but I do now. It wasn't even the whole album, just a couple of selected tracks. I genuinely wasn't trying to find anything, and I mention this to her, and she loses it. Gets very angry, accuses me of stalking her highly suspicious. So now, I'm only even more concerned. I express my concerns about how I'm struggling to trust her and we talk. She says nothing happened. Fine. So a couple of days ago, I say that we need to work on rebuilding trust. I ask to see her phone. After some initial hesitation and swipes, she says okay. She stands by me as I open up Google Maps. She thought I was going to read her social media. I told her I try to respect her autonomy and privacy. I open the location tracking to see where she was during the retreat Thursday, nothing out of the ordinary. Friday, there is a house nearby the hotel that it says she was at for hours. She doesn't know what it was. I set the phone down for a minute. She erases her history. Highly suspicious. I'm trying to understand what happened, and I check our phone bill. There is a strange call two hours before it put her at that location. 
She doesn't know what the call was. Highly suspicious. I try to explain to her that during a very narrow time frame of concern, that Google Maps, a GPS system, accurate to within 15 to 30 feet, places her at this location for 3.5 hours. She just can't explain it. So this is where we're at now. I cannot ignore the signs that something happened. I've told her that I don't care what happened. I genuinely don't. I am not hung up on whatever happened. I can forgive and forget. The only thing that concerns me now is the lack of trust. I love her so much. I accept her as she is. I have zero intentions of divorcing her. I strive to have perfect love for an imperfect person. But there's this door that has been shut between us. I've told her it isn't knowing that bothers me. It's the not knowing. I'm scared and anxious. Has the relationship already died and do I just not realize it? Is the reality worse than I can imagine? I don't know. I don't think she is lying to be malicious. I think she is lying to protect herself, myself, and us. I think she is scared and anxious too. I've come to the conclusion that if she is strong or not strong enough to tell me the truth, I will be strong enough to accept her lies. What? Bruh. All I can do is stand by her as she works through this. Love is a battlefield. My god. You were beaten into submission before you even came to write this. Jesus. I won't take the easy way out. And I have faith that we will make, make it through this. We agreed that I could put this out there. You agreed on this? She has read this and made edits. Jesus. If a whip crack were a person... I'm trying to get my shit together. I know my options. I cannot lie to myself and there is nothing to be concerned about, but I cannot leave. I am trying to cope. Cope being the right word. I am picking this up, acknowledging the hurt and setting it down again. How do I best move on from here? It seems that your balls are forever trapped in the purse that she owns. So there's nothing here to say because you've already made your decision. But if you want people's perspective, which is why I guess she allowed you to type this here, when she's not being forth, she's not being honest about the call, where she was, who she was with, what she was doing with that person. When the comedy is, she must know that even if she told you that she was bent over and receiving it inside of her from some other dude, that she was on her knees, balls deep, in the throat with some guys, you know, you would just accept it. You've already made that decision. This is sad. This is sad. Because it's not just you two failures on the table. This is a this is a marriage with children, several children. And odds are some of them aren't old enough to, you know, be able to not be affected in a genuine, you know, long lasting way by the separation of their parents. It's not a relationship, it's a facade, you know? You guys have the communication part down in the relationship, and by that I mean one of you does. But a relationship without honesty is just two people tolerating each other? What's funny is a part of you understands that something's wrong, but you refuse to, <laughs> to do anything about it. You're watching her erase her history. You're just sitting there while you know that she's like pretending there was no calls and there was nothing going on at this place that she doesn't know what's going on, you know? Love is a battlefield. I won't take the easy way out. So it's like you're the you're the you're the problem. You're the, you're the type of person that'll convince yourself that if she is making the choice to go be with somebody else, 
you know, she wouldn't even need to blame the alcohol. Oh, you know, I was drunk and one thing led to another. She could just say it was your fault and you'd believe it. And you'd believe it. In a real relationship. And no being married for a certain amount of time doesn't make it real. Having children doesn't make it real. Any fucking idiot can knock a baby up into somebody. Any idiot can get pregnant and fart out a baby, dude. Any any two people can just convince themselves that there's nobody else out there and stay together forever. But to honestly have two people that are accountable for their own actions... I don't think she's lying to be malicious. I think she's lying to protect herself, myself, and us. What the hell are you rationalizing here, dude? Does that always make it okay? And why why shouldn't she consider herself just as accountable? Would it be okay if you just started lying? Would it be okay if you vanished and, you know, ended up at somebody's house for, for three hours when you said you're on a trip that was work-related? And then, you know, when you're caught in these lies, you say, you don't know, I just don't know. And then when you're caught in those lies, is it okay to excuse because you're using phrases like, oh, I'm just doing it to protect myself? Who the hell isn't protecting themselves with a lie? What the fuck? You you think you're sparing the kids the the turmoil of a of a of a separation? When in reality the people that they're looking at aren't the people <sighs> that you guys are projecting onto them. A comment here reads So you don't want a divorce. That means you're completely and totally fine with being married to an alcoholic who abuses alcohol and sleeps with other men. Yeah, because his balls are in that purse. Because that's the life you're choosing for yourself right now. And it's not just, I mean, being married to an alcoholic, that's fine. A bitch who sleeps with other men, that's cool. But when the slut can't even be honest about it, when, when she's lying to you and you catch her in that lie, and instead of demanding honesty out of her, you're saying, oh, she's lying to protect herself and, and me and, and other people. You know, you're making excuses for her. You're holding yourself to standards that you don't hold her to. I don't think I've read a story from a bigger cuck. And I owe it to myself to be honest about it. That's the life you're choosing for yourself right now. A life of misery and respect. Your poor children, they deserve better than this, is what the comment says. An alcoholic mother is ridiculously hard on kids. And on top of that, they don't have anybody willing to model a healthy relationship for them. I'm so excited that my sentiments are essentially mirrored here. You guys think you're doing those little bastards a favor by just staying together. But it's not real. And who you're projecting? is showing cracks, and those cracks are what those kids will remember. Mom bursting into tears are what those kids will remember. Alcoholic mom, liar mom, even if you try your best to hide this shit from them, kids are smarter than you think. Leaving the situation unaddressed will have psychological consequences on them for the rest of their lives. You need to get into therapy. Which, again, doesn't work for everybody because you are fully codependent. That's a that's a, a nice dressed up way of saying that you're a cuck. Call individual therapists today and start the process of realizing you're good enough. Yeah, get some self-fucking respect, man. Find some confidence. Get your balls out of that purse. You know? Because this is a damn shame. And it's a, it's a disgusting read. And I wish you the best. What the hell is this? relationship advice.